structure of DNA double helix this is given is a very schematic presentation he is all, all, all the things are listed uh, in this picture that uh, these are the distances between uh, two base we call it the helix rise this is uh, 0 0.34 nanometer here is 0 0.33 is given and the distance between uh, one helix actually we call it 0.34 nanometer okay so this is the overall distance of uh, one rotation in, uh, if you look at from that direction because the 3.4 which is called a helix pitch now in between these we can find 10 nucleotide almost that's why we call it 10 nucleotide per turn okay so or 10 residues per turn uh, in some books you can find 10.4 okay. and not only that dna contains two major groups why these groups arise because the helix is not made up with something like that so never draw dna like this this is not at all the structure of dna the structure of DNA will be something like that. So it will form a major group. It have to form a minor group in the other side of the major group. So it arranges some. Uh, it strands in such a way that in some places it form a major group, which have uh, which are having a much more distant, and which is really more deep, a more deeper, and more. Uh, area covering a uh, place and uh, in the in opposite side of it is a lower area lower area containing portion and it is uh, it is called the minor group okay and there is not only a one difference about the structural information but also major and minor group differs in various different aspects we'll going to discuss that later but this is the actual basic part and you also see you see in this picture that the distance between these two strands always kept maintained in 2.37 nanometer that's a very important concept because if this strand uh, structure is uh, diffracted this structure is deviated from its native structure then what happens the dna cannot be stable in nature because those hydrogen bonding remember the actual force that sta stabilizes the dna is the most important force is one the hydrogen bonding between the bases which will zip those strands up and the second thing is the base stacking interaction between those bases. Stacking interaction is nothing but the interaction of base pairs of upper layer and the lower layer. So if we take this layer 1 and this is layer 2 then the interaction between these two layer in up and down position is called the stacking interaction. And this interaction is made up with hydrophobic interaction. So this is hydrophobic in nature. That means there can would be no water present in the inside portion of the DNA strand. So any trace of water, if present in the inside of the strand, if water enters into this core region of the DNA strand, then DNA structure will be uh, will be dissolved, will be break, will be broken down. Okay. So in this picture, we are looking at the large surfaces are free, but actually. Uh, this is a very simple diagram which to to uh, make us understand but actually the DNA is much more complex not at all leaving any structure outside so all the structures are fulfilled in DNA is stacked in such a way that these all structures are facing the inward portion which is the hydrophobic region and only the regions uh, of phosphodiester linkage or uh, the phosphate sugar backbone can face uh, face the inward uh, uh, in the out out uh, outer region of the uh, uh, facing towards the water surface or the uh, polar surface so now let's move on here this is a very good picture this is a very good slide indeed you have the molecular space filling model here uh, and we have the stylist diagram and we also have the chemical structure diagram so in this picture what we are looking at what, what is uh, actually denoted is one thing about the major group and minor group and not only that but also the complementary nature of the DNA that means if one strand goes in this direction another have to go in this direction so never draw it uh, like that so the sugar that's another very important uh, thing about this picture which will clear your concept is the sugar is present which the first sugar which you are looking at the oxygen which I call it the head of the sugar is pointing upward and that in other strand or the complementary strand the sugar must face the downward position in many books you can find in many students not actually books in many writings of students I found that uh, the direction of this head uh, they place in the same direction or same orientation though they know they are anti parallel in, in nature but still they mistake it this is, this is a very horrible mistake <coughs> so never make this kind of mistake okay so this is what is happening so the bond the phosphodiesel linkage is never a linear linkage the linkage is rather rather the staggered linkage like that okay the linkage is 
this this kind of oblique linkage okay so that's what i uh, emphasize on now the hydrogen bonding of ad adjacent anti parallel dna strands you can see here to make the hydrogen bonding very very favorable we need to place the those uh, uh, base pairs close together uh, more close together rather than three angstrom so you need to place those bases uh, less than 10 angstrom distance regulation to make a hydrogen bond because if there are more distance gap of t3 more than 3 angstrom then the water molecule can come in and the hydrogen bond can be disrupted so that's why we need to make this kind of situation so after reorganizing them another thing uh, the dna uh, sequence have to kept in mind is that that the f if there is a base stacking or base pairing uh, in this uh, plane in the second one have to have a slightly change of plane uh, and that plane deviation is 36 degree as we have seen before so uh, that's all these things are uh, come to be contacted so not only by making this 36 degree orientation so in this case if we need to make hydrogen bonds like this linear DNA that is that will be very easier that was very easy very easy if we have to do that but what happens this is not the actual case we need to make something like that we need to make something spiral not the linear DNA strand so that's why if we need to make bonds between between the uh, adjacent base pairs adjacent bases we need to orient those bases in such a way that they no, they counter they do not counter attack the 36 degree rotation which is also needed to make the helix spiralum because to making the to make the helix spiralum give us two different advantages one is to place those bases in the, uh, in particular orientation second thing is to make or, or place those bases in the interior of the dna and and phase and make those uh, phosphate dna, DNA backbone to, to face the outer portion of the DNA and, and as well as uh, to uh, to to ensure that the DNA strand is protected for, from the aqueous environment or bases ca can be protected from the aqueous environment okay so that's the, these are the properties that's why it is maintained in such a uh, uh, such an order so that's why the hydrogen bonding which has to be placed uh, have to have uh, some amount of some degree of uh, chemical freedom to rotate itself up and we can see they twist they can actually twist themselves up in such a way that they can counter attack all these different uh, different uh, kind of problems and they can place the bases in proper right orientation to make bonds with each other and uh, they also uh, they also actually maintaining uh, the orientation of base pairing 36 degree angle 